Hey everybody, Jeremy with Detroit Tech. I have a pretty nice mouse, the Logitech G502 Proteus Spectrum, and I love it. But I do keep hearing about the Logitech MX Master. This is the mouse that all the creative people on YouTube use. They say it's the best for productivity, like editing videos and things like that. Now, I've had a Logitech mouse for the last, I don't know, 9, 10 years, so I figured it would be a decent trade. So, I gave the MX Master a trial. Did it replace my G502? Let's find out. Let's take a quick look at the incumbent first. The G502 Proteus Spectrum is generally geared towards gamers. It has the all-important RGB lights that you just can't go without. It has a massively over-engineered sensor that reaches up to 12,000 DPI. You can even switch that on the fly with up to five presets per profile. The scroll wheel has an awesome button below it to switch it from infinity scrolling to that clicky scrolling, and I play with it way too much. There are weights you can put in the bottom of the mouse to customize it, and these hide behind a magnetic door to make the weight switching quicker so you can get to the next game. And you can even actually tune the sensor for whatever surface you're using in the Logitech software. The buttons here are rated at 20 million clicks, and according to Logitech, there's an improved key plate design for better click feeling and performance. To top it all off, there's only a single millisecond report rate to make sure every input registers as quickly as possible to, well, to punish those noobs for coming into your territory. The G502 has 11 programmable buttons which can be controlled along with the RGB lighting in the Logitech gaming software. You can store up to three profiles in the mouse with every button customized and with different lighting and DPI settings. You can also store the profiles on the computer, which opens up the possibility of setting up customized button settings for individual applications. The software will automatically switch between the settings depending on what program you're in. I found this to be a little bit buggy. It seemed to get confused at times when I would have two of those programs open. For instance, I'll often have some combination of either Premiere Pro, After Effects, or Pro Tools open and it just wasn't always on the correct settings. So the easiest thing for me to do is set a couple switches on my regular profile to just some weird key combination, use that for games, and then just have separate profiles for Premiere and Pro Tools since those are really used the most. Using the MX Master was definitely different. Built for productivity rather than gaming made this mouse a bit hard for me to get used to. The form factor is good, my hand fits pretty well on it even if it is a little bit big. The thumb rest kind of button thing is quite comfortable. The maximum DPI value is only 1600 and there is no RGB. Instead of a door to hide the weights, the bottom has this on off switch and a button with the numbers 1, 2, 3 over it. This is one of the big pluses of this mouse. You can connect to three different devices and switch between them on the fly. It's great for a video editor who needs to take their work on the go from one computer to the next. It is heavier than the 502 by a fairly large margin for the most part, and I find that I really needed to focus to lift the mouse to scroll a long way until the plastic heated up and gave me a little bit more grip. The center scroll wheel will automatically switch to infinity scrolling when scrolling with gusto, assuming you're trying to go way down the page. There is even a side scrolling wheel on the left side for your thumb. The standard back forward buttons are right behind it, though they are pretty close together and it can be difficult to feel the difference between them. As I mentioned before, the thumb rest actually kind of doubles as a button, which defaults to some swiping gestures to get into different desktops, things like that. The MX Master does come with seven buttons and of course everything is customizable in the Logitech Options software. This is where you can adjust the DPI setting in 200 DPI increments and assign all the buttons to your heart's content. Every button is up for grabs here. You can invert the horizontal scrolling wheel even if that's your thing. The thumb button has some interesting functionality to it. You can assign swiping gestures, so when you're holding down the thumb button and swipe, say, down, you can set it to hide all the windows. Left and right are by default switching to separate desktops you've set up. And I've found these motions actually kind of difficult to get used to, and I had a hard time getting them to work a lot of the time as well. The software does allow you to customize everything for individual applications as well, and the results with that were 
similar to the 502. So conclusion time. There really is a lot to each of these mice. I could spend an entire video on each individual one. But to the original question, can the MX Master replace my G502? For me, no. But it comes down to your use case. Are you spending any time doing first person shooter games? 502. Has less latency and the weight is customizable for those snap no scope headshots that piss everybody off. Are you moving around to multiple computers all the time? MX Master is perfect for that. When you're on the computer, is your focus primarily productivity or content creation? MX Master is perfect. Small hands? 502. Just use a desktop? 502. Do you really just use one application at a time and need different button sets for every single application? Well, either really would work for that. Do you need RGB? 502. But here's the thing. Both mice are phenomenal. The MX Master has some great features the 502 doesn't have, but is it enough for me to replace the gaming-centric 502? No. So thanks for watching, everybody. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. If you hated it, hit the thumbs down. Either way, let us know which mouse you would pick, or rather, heck, even what mouse you would like us to take a look at in the future, and we'll see you in the next video.